First shootings of the Super Walker. William Hovey Smith, 2014. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzleloading, and here we're shooting Colonel Samuel Coates' biggest pistol. This is Hovey Smith with Hovey's Outdoor Adventures. Well, in the last video, uh, we showed you the Super Walker revolver and this combination scope and laser sight we put on it. Well, we have now loaded it for the first time. And this is a round ball load. On this load, all I'm trying to do is just, okay, what is the capacity of the chambers in the cylinder? Uh, this gun shoots nominally 60 grains of WFG black powder. The fact is, is that the 60 grain load of WFG in this particular revolver fills the chambers all the way up to the top. Well, black powder does compress, but that's a little more than I want to push it. So what I've done is I've knocked back the load down to 57 grains. Uh, concerning the ball size for round balls for this revolver, don't even think about using .451s. They practically roll in and out of the chambers. 454s do a little bit better. Best of all is .457 round balls. Uh, the same balls that are recommended for the Ruger O Army. Now these give a better gas seal in this pistol. So what we're starting out with are 57 grains of WFG black powder and a .457 round ball and number 11 CCI Magnum percussion caps. I am about 25 yards from a 36 inch by 36 inch piece of cardboard downrange is propped up against an old tree stump. And this shooting is going to tell us a few things about this gun. Well, what did our initial shooting tell us? Well, what it told us, as I suspected, the fouling from here really got on the scope. And although you can still see through it after a cylinder full, it is obscured. Now, another thing was an operational characteristic of the scope itself. It takes a while when you sight through the scope like this to actually find your crosshairs. I mean, if you move the scope slightly, it's all dark, and you have to get it where you can actually see through it and see images beyond it. Otherwise, you're looking at something that just looks black. It looks like the scope cap is still on. Now, that takes an instant or two. And if I've got a hog running around in front of me, I don't want to be trying to find it in my scope and try to track the hog at the same time. I want to be able to see my sights and follow the hog all the way through. I think this scope has showed me what it can and unless I have a very stable shot like from a tree stand and a still animal, yeah, uh, I'd probably be better off with a red dot sight. We're now resuming with the Super Walker and what we have done is we have put this red dot sight on it from Annie and it holds promise of being actually much better for hog shooting than the scope was because I can actually see the target, I can see the field around the target and I'm not sometimes looking at a very dark black hole. Okay, well we are also proceeding now to use 777 powder and elongate bullets. And what I'm doing now is scraping some of the excess lubricant off the bottom. 
And we have found out with triple seven powder that with this bullet we can use the same volumetric load that we used with black powder and round ball. Okay? Which was 57 grains, right? And that translates to 42.7 grains by weight. Triple uh, seven is much less dense than black powder, and that's the reason for the difference. Now, it also compresses better than black powder. And it is somewhat sensitive to compression. So you want to make sure that you use exactly the same force all the time. So we have our measure. Okay. And we have our funnel that you have seen before. All right. Now, uh, I have also cut some wads here. And I'm placing one of these underneath the bullet. Uh, the reason being that this bullet does have a little lubricant on the base. So I don't want that touching the powder and I don't want it spoiling the powder. And you wiggle the bullet down until you get the base actually started and pushed down with the thumb. Like that. And now it will clear in the enlarged loading port of the pistol. Okay. Center. Got to wiggle a little bit, make sure it's centered in there, and you aren't trying to squoosh it over to one side. Something to protect the palm. Crunch. Crunch. Oh, okay. So you get three little movements there as the powder compresses. And what this does is place the bullets just below the chambers. Once again, we're shooting the Super Walker, now with a red dot sight, and we're using triple seven powder and a nominal 200 grain bullet. testing of the AIM red dot sight and the triple seven powder did well. All the charges fired uh, first time round and that's always good but did somehow tie up the gun uh, probably with a cap fragment so we'll see what happened there. And the cylinder is being stuck by the pole. Well, I don't have to tear into this thing guys so this is going to take a while. We now have the Super Walker functional again. And what had happened was a piece of cap had actually blown back into the mechanism. And this required a complete disassembly of the revolver to remove it. Hmm. So the takeaway here is with percussion revolvers, this can happen just as easily on the first shot or on the sixth shot, as happened here. So, take another gun up in the stand with you. You may need it. Got that one? All right. Now to resume. Uh, a little catch-up work. Those of you who have followed this series with a walker all the way through, remember that I had to use a vise to actually fit the brass frame to the rest of the gun? Uh-huh. Well, still true, guys. We tried some other clamps. Didn't work. Nah. So, had to go back to our vice. So, had this happened in the field, yeah, this revolver would have been absolutely useless for the rest of the day until you got back to camp and could take it apart. Because you're not apt to carry this out in the woods with you. So we are resuming. 
And what we have now are Cato's next heaviest bullets. And these are nominally 240 grain bullets. In actuality, uh, they weigh about 244.5 grains. Okay? Now, on our powder charge, because this is a bigger bullet, we know we're going to have to cut back on our powder charge a little bit. Well, we loaded the first chamber successfully, but 40 grains would load, but it's awful tough. I mean, you have to put a tremendous amount of compression on it. So I don't want to put that much pressure on my gun. And we go ahead and load these up like we did before. And so next we're going to go out and shoot. I really like how that load shot. Yeah, uh, you know you shot something when you shot it out of this revolver. Uh, you are starting to get uh, recoil. But the accuracy seemed to be pretty good even with this mixed lot of loads I was using. Well, I tried to load Cato's 255 grain bullet in my walker here, but it is just too tough to try to get in there. And so I'm not going to bother with it right now. What I will probably wind up doing is building a separate loading stand for this cylinder. There are commercial stands available where you take the cylinder out of the gun and then you have a separate lever that you use to actually load them. And I'm going to build one for the walker and then we'll be able to experiment with all three bullets. But right now we'll call it good. What we found out is basically the nominal 200 grain bullet, which actually weighs uh, 220 grains, uh, very likely develops the highest velocity and muzzle energy. And it may well be that the heavier bullet, nominally 240 grains, uh, produces better accuracy. But we'll find these details out when we actually get our chronograph out and do that kind of work on these loads. But now, yeah, the gun works. I've decided on my siding system here. We're going to go with the red dot sight. And I know what kind of loads we're going to be playing with. But now, this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe. Goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Among my prize-winning books are Extreme Muzzle Loading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing, and all of these are available as softcover and e-books. I have an 8-book e-book series for 2013-14, and I have one pistol title published, Hunting Big and Small Game with Muzzle Loading Pistols, and we'll have one coming out, Hunting with Muzzle Loading Revolvers, that will feature this particular gun. Now, the loads that I use for the walker are listed below, and these are high-end loads intended for deer and hog hunting. Now, if you can practice with lower velocity and energy loads and shoot much more comfortably. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 300 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.